Let's get the mic moving. Sing praise the name. Praise the name above all names. The one who reigns forever. Still the same. Above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the Lord. Sing praise the name. Name above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the Lord. Sing Jesus. So precious, I will praise the name. There is no other name, Lord. There is no other name, Lord. See, praise the name. Praise the name, name above all names. The one who reigns forever, still the same. Above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the Lord. Sing praise the name. Praise the name. Name above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same. Praise the name. Sing Jesus. Come on, Chester, get him at me, baby.
Come on, church, lift God's name in praise right now. Father, we glorify you in this place. All right, the church is getting them as moving. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta move in the light of the love. It's called by the names to the Savior of all. We got a new song. Generations will sing, oh, 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 we got a new hope, we got a new hope, all because of the cross, the same by the grace you have given to us, we got a new song, now that we are redeemed, oh, 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 for your name, for your name, shouting all the earth, great above our Get a mask up in track for your for your glory for your glory we will give all we are all our lives for the love of your son we got a new song now that we are redeemed oh oh oh, 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 oh. sing for your name Praise in this place, church. Lord, we need you to move. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Sing Jesus, Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, sing. Holy, there, there is, is no one like you. There, there is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show. Your heart and lead me in your love to those 
could ever be. We live for you. We live for you. We live for you. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Who is worthy, oh. begin to worship him right now and give it over to him Lord we give it over to you right now in our worship and in our praise Father be magnified church 
church to sing. I want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there, Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus, I speak Jesus. Cause your name is Your name is I. Yes, it is. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Sing, I just want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear. Every soul held, every soul held captive by the passion. I see Jesus. Cause your name is your name is power. Your name is Jesus. your name is right. Break every stronghold. Cause your name is power, Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Church, the music is carry on playing. Let's begin to just worship God in this place. Let's begin to give him a praise. Let's begin to give him honor in this place. I want to encourage you guys with a scripture. James 2, verse 20, chapter 2, verse 24. It says, you see a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not Rahab, the prostitute, justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out the other way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead this song is talking about speaking we can believe all we want church but we have to have action you need things to move in your life but you must speak and have faith you must work towards it you can't stand still there's people with strongholds in your families you gotta speak it over your family's lives chains will be broken today there's people in your families not saved you gotta speak it today that they will be saved there are things you are going through, financial struggles, mental struggles, it could be anything church, but we must also speak the name of Jesus. So as we sing this bridge, let's speak it and believe it church, that he will break all chains. Father, we worship you in this place. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. From Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout him. Jesus in the streets. Shout him. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my life. Jesus for my family. Yeah. I speak the holy name of Jesus. We're going to go one more time. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. 
Just for my family. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Your name is Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Come on, church, let me hear you sing it. name that he will move. I need you to give him a shout of praise. I need you to worship his name right now. Whatever you are going through, church, if you speak it out and you believe, he will always come through. Let's worship his name. Father, we magnify you. Amen. Keep praising God, church. He's worthy to be praised. Let's praise his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Church, we just want to come into a time of prayer. We want to pray for our neighbor from the left to the right. How many know that Jesus can change every situation? We just sung that song and it's so powerful that whatever has gone on throughout this week, I don't know what's gone on for many of you guys in this place in your life, but I know that Jesus can change your situation right now, but you have to cry out to him. So let's just bring our needs, anything that we, is on our heart. Let's just cry out to God. So church, help me to pray. Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord Jesus, that we could just come into your presence, Lord. What a privilege it is, Lord, to be able to just to lift up your name and worship you for who you are and what you have done in our lives. We could have been anywhere else, Lord, but we are here worshiping a living God who has saved us, oh Lord, who has changed us from where we was before. I pray that as we are in this place right now, that you will just bring, oh Lord, deliverance upon every single situation that people are going through, Lord. Father, speak into lives of people that may feel like giving up, people that may feel derailed, that they're going into another path. I pray, speak into their lives today help them oh lord draw them back into you lord jesus i pray for people that may be going through depression oh lord anxiety people that may not be sure in choices and things that they're doing in their life lord draw them back onto you lord knowing that father you make all things work out for the good to those who love you lord jesus we ask right now that you're speaking to every single life in this place let nobody leave here just the same let everybody leave here change lord father let every single individual leave here oh lord knowing that father there is a god that is in heaven that father it loves them that wants to spend time with them that wants to change their lives that wants to bring transformation into their lives father we know that we desperately need you and this is why we cry out to you in this place lord jesus oh we thank you lord for all that you have done and all that you're about to do lord father we are so thankful lord jesus lord we thank you for this time where we could come before you and cry out to you lord father we thank you for your grace and mercy upon our lives we could have been anywhere else but we are here worshiping you thanking you for just bringing us into your presence lord father we pray that we will not leave here the same today that you will speak into each and every situation speak a personal message to each and every individual help them to know that father they should not grow weary in doing good for in due season they shall reap lord i pray that you'll speak into every single heart every single life people that don't know you in this place help them to leave here knowing and experiencing your love your kindness your mercy the sacrifice that you paid for each and every one of us help them to leave here in the victory of this father we pray most of all that your son jesus christ will just be lifted up and magnified in this place and we thank you for all that you're about to do in this service and all the church says Amen. to turn to your neighbor and make them feel welcome Amen, church. Amen. We're just going to make some time for some announcements. Um, first announcement straight after the service today 
There is women's ministry event, red or green flags. So if you're a woman in this place, um, again, please come along straight after the service. This Wednesday, we'll be continuing our service on, on the, we're going to be continuing our series on love life. So again, it's always a powerful series that people are always edified by. So I encourage everybody to come out this Wednesday. Next Saturday, we have an impact team to Woolwich. Um, if you'd like to come to the impact team to Woolwich, please, we need more names. Come to me after the service and I'll put your name down. It'll be a powerful time when we go to help uh, a baby church. Um, the, following, the following Sunday or next Sunday, we have our new start class continuing on. So I've had some reports that the last one last week was powerful time. We're going to have one again this Sunday. So please um, get involved if you're a new person in, um, and you want to know more about what we do, why we do what we do as a church and more about Jesus. We have three international impact teams. The first one in July to Hamburg. Um, sorry, yeah, the first one in March to Ghana. The next one July to, in, um, to Hamburg, Germany and in September to Romania. If you'd like to get involved in that, there's QR codes there. If you scan those, you can sign up. Um, and then please also, we do have our updates on the WhatsApp community. So if you would like to keep up to date as what we're, to what we're doing as a church, please scan the app, join the community, and you can be updated. The last important announcement is, as, as everybody knows, the conference is fast approaching, but we still need 10 names to help with cleaning for the, um, the conference. Again, the, we want to bless the conference. We want to be a, a blessing as well as receive. We want to bless. So if you can, if you can make it and you're able to um, volunteer for that, for cleaning at the conference, please see Sister Christine after the service today. And if the ushers please will come forward and make time for an offering. Um, and so recently, I'm sure everybody's um, gone on the, the news recently, but they said that we're officially in a recession. So. Um, when with recessions, what we kind of see is that people certain start to tighten up, inflation is still high, and it just becomes a bit more difficult in general. And what the tendency can be when you're um, in a recession is to, you start contemplating whether you should give, maybe you should prioritize something else, but I, I want the word of God to encourage us today, because the Bible says, in Matthew it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. And what, the, what that's telling us today is saying to us, if we prioritize the kingdom of God, even in our circumstances where there is a bit, if there is some lack or we're not in the financial space we'd like to be, what God is saying here is that he will give you everything you need. There's a story in the Bible from First Kings of a widow. In an equally um, trying time, there's a famine in the area, so they've got financial difficulties, and she's a widow in those times. It would have been much more difficult for her to provide for herself and her family. But what happens is that she's challenged to give food, that her last bit of food, to the man of God. Um, and she's reluctant, but the Bible says that Elijah, the prophet, he challenges her, the man of God, he says to her in 1 Kings 17, verse 14, says, for, this, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and, there shall, and, a, and, shall, and a jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And what he's saying is here is that you won't go without, even in this time of difficulty, you're not going to go without, you shall not be empty, you shall not be spent, You'll have everything provided for you as long as you put me first. And so that's the same thing that God will challenge us today. He will encourage us today. Put me first, even in difficult times, and I'll show you that enough will be, you won't be empty, you won't be spent, but you have more than enough and um, provision. So Brother Prince, let's remember that as Brother Prince, please praise over the offering. Amen. Cast your burdens upon Jesus, for He cares for you. Cast your burdens upon Jesus, for He cares for you. Sing higher. Praise for the praise and worship team. Praise God. How many love Jesus? 
Amen. Look at someone and say, have you got the victory? Amen. You like that, man. Look at someone and say, it's yours. Amen. It is. Praise God. Praise God. And so we're, we're, we're going to be looking at Luke 8, verse 43. Luke 8, verse 43. But I, I want to do, an, if some of you are wondering, why is this table up here? And so I want to do an illustration. And so some of the guys have uh, said they'll, they'll help me with this illustration. And so um, uh, this is, uh, I think we did I speak to Isabel. She was going to come up uh, and help me with the illustration. I don't know if she's here. Okay, she's here. Give her a round of applause as she comes up. And so um, in that bag, there's some water. If you could just put the water around this table, please. Equally, as, equally around the table. And so we're going to let her do that. Now, some of you today, this sermon is not the sermon you wanted to hear. Because today, I'm preaching a sermon about you're not ready to date. Look at someone say, are you ready? If you're married, just, just, just look forward. Look forward, look forward. It's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. Some of the wives wanted to look to the husband. Are you ready? It's too late now, sis, man. You've been married 10 years. And so, the reason why I say some people are not ready is because you've got to work some stuff out first. You've got to work some stuff out first. And so, uh, this is she's put these around the table expertly. Oh, my days, you ain't no joke. You ain't no joke. How many we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we got two more there. That's it. That, that will be enough. Yeah, just put those two at the end there. Perfect. Give her a round of applause. Amen. You can wait there. And so, because the table is up and built, this woman only had to come along and just put the water on it. It's very simple. The, the legs were up. The table's up. Everything was very simple. And so, uh, this is, when you, when you go through life, before you start dating, let me speak to the men here, before you start bringing a woman into your life and saying to that woman, she can come and she can bring her femininity and start building you up and blessing you and now you're like, ah, this is life, this is good. But there needs to be a table first, bro. There needs to be something here first. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a different analogy now. Okay, so if we could just come and take off all the water again. If you could just come, let's get the bag and we can take off all the water. We've got some guys back there. Can we come and help? We need as much as we can just to take off all the water now. You guys are going to take off all the water. And now what I want you to do um, is take the table down as well. Take the table down. Okay, put it flat. Don't worry about it. You're going to have to bring that water back. We're going to have to get you to come back with that water. Put the table flat. Put it down flat. Okay. Could you come, Isabel, again and put the water around the table? This time you guys can help her. Put, help her get the water around the table. Okay. Same like you did. Perf, perf, uh, it was done perfectly. Around the table. Here we go. We get the water around there. Okay. Look at that, expertly done. That's why you need a woman's touch, amen. These guys would have done it in a pyramid. <laughs> okay, Akemi, put the table up. Try, just, just, just try, try your best. What's gonna happen? Okay, stop there. This is when people start dating before you've actually built yourself up yet. Some men, you've brought a woman into your life and then now you're trying to build yourself up. You're already, she's already starting to put things into your life. Now you're like, ah, oh, see, it's them. Something wrong with them. Look what they've done. She's not serious. Why did she put the water here? It's not her. It's not her. The issue is, it is easier to build the table first and then put the water on. If you try to do things out of order, it causes more problems. Sometimes what people are doing is, you have dated before you've worked some things out. And to work it out in dating is causing more problems. You're actually, imagine if these weren't bottles, these were cups. 
there'd be a lot of spillage. Things would be getting soggy and wet and wasted. And so today what I'm saying is, before we start putting relationships on the table, let's get the table up. Amen? How many are with me? Okay, give them a round of applause. You can take that away. Really what I want to talk about today is, some of you, you look really good, but you're damaged. You look good. And the problem is, when damaged people date, they get more damaged. Listen to me. When damaged people date, they get more damaged. Not only do they get more damaged, when damaged people date, they damage others. And this is why we have love songs. Because damaged people are dating. It's been going on for generations. I was just doing a bit of survey. So in the 2010s, uh, I don't know how true this is, but these are some of the key uh, uh, love songs. You have Rihanna, Love on the Brain. I don't know what that song is. If it's good, bad, ugly, that's up between you and Rihanna. In the 2000s, you have Beyonce, Irreplaceable. In the 90s, we had Tony Braxton, Unbreak My Heart. In the 80s, we had Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? Big up the 80s crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got your back. In the 70s, this is where I was born, so if you just do your thing. We had Earth, Wind, and Fire after love has gone. In the 60s, we have I Wish It It Would Rain by The Temptations. And if you're in the 50s and the, and the, and the 40s and the 30s, we big up yourself. We love you, man. It goes on and on and on because what we have many times is damaged people dating, damaging themselves and damage others. We need to stop dating damaged. And that's what God wants to help some of you with. Now, some of you may be dating. You're going to pick something up from here. Some of you may be single about to date. You're going to get something out of it. Some of you may be married and you think, oh, my day's too late. No, God's going to help you. Amen. Just look at someone say, God's going to help you. Amen. So Luke 8 verse 30. I'm sorry, 43. Let's, let's go straight into the text, the Word of God. The Bible says this. Let me start my timer. Oh, I'll keep you here all night. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anybody. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus says, who was it? That touched me. When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowd surrounds you and, you and are pressing on you. But Jesus said, Someone touch me, for I perceive power has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him, declaring in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Let's pray. Father, we ask you right now for your grace, your mercy. I pray that you would minister to us. Help us, Father. Help us in relationships. I pray for those that are single. Give them wisdom and understanding and discernment. I pray for those that are dating. Father, I pray that you would help them to deal with the issues. Father, and I pray for those that are married, Lord God, that you would continue to touch and help them. We ask you this in Jesus' name and all God's people said. In our text, this woman comes behind Jesus. She touches him and she becomes healed. Now her condition before she meets Jesus is a very serious condition. I've preached so many sermons on this woman, but I'll go for it again because I realize there, were, there may be some people in the, in, in the service today or listening online that don't know uh, what's going on here. And the Bible says that this woman has been bleeding for 12 years. This woman has a discharge or an issue coming out of her life. And what we're seeing in the Bible, it's saying this, Something is damaged on the inside that is flowing out and it's affecting everything. Something about her is damaged on the inside, but it's not just staying on the inside. It's flowing out of her and it's affecting everything. And specifically, we know that she would have been weak. We know that she, her immune system and her, and her energy and all of these things and her own personal life would be affected by this. But in Bible times, it would have affected her relationships. So think about this woman. Something's wrong on the inside with her that's affecting her relationships. Now let me give you 
a reason why. In Jewish culture, this discharge, it would have been considered ritually impure. We see that in Leviticus 15. What this means is this woman would have been excluded from participation in various religious activities, including entering the temple, going to the synagogue. She would have been considered ceremonially unclean. So she can't move around people. She can't come to church. She can't hang out with people because of this issue of blood. Not only that, in Bible times, a persistent illness could be perceived by other people as divine punishment. People would have saw her and said, why have you had this for 12 years? Why are you not healed yet? Something, you've done something wrong. The Bible doesn't say she did anything wrong. But that's how people would have thought in Bible times. And it would have been a sign of her own impurity and possibly leading to social isolation and a stigma. Now, think about what I'm saying here. This woman has something damaged on the inside of her that's flowing out and affecting all her relationships. There's no way I don't think this woman is meeting a man. And any man that was attracted to her may would have come close and then found out what was going on and it would have repelled him. Because how could he bring her to the synagogue? How can he go places with her and all of these things? When I read that and I think about that, I realize many people sadly today are damaged on the inside. Not a, not a physical deformity. Not a physical handicap. We're not talking about that. We're talking about damage on the inside that's affecting their relationships. Now, let me give you some things where I say damage on the inside. Depression. Where people are dealing with depression. Many times depression is not about the outside. It's about the inside. If you lose a loved one and you start to uh, feel sad about it, that's not depression. That's mourning. That's natural. That's mourning, that's grief. We get that. We all meant to go through that. If you love someone and you lose them. But we're talking about depression. Depression, in, depression is when they're really, it's not about the outside. It's about what's going on in the inside. And if you get into a relationship and you're someone who uh, battles with depression, you are someone who goes up and down. And that relationship is now dictated by your feelings. The person comes home, how is she today? How is he today? Oh, he's, uh, he's normal today. Hey, how you doing? That's fine. Or let me open the door. How is he today? Is he depressed? He's depressed. Okay, kids, shh. Everyone's whisper around him. And now, because of something on the inside, it's affecting relationships. Loneliness. People have been led to believe that marriage will heal loneliness. If that was the case, why is there so many lonely married people? Marriage doesn't heal loneliness. When lonely people enter into marriage, they feel that this person is going to fix them. But the problem is they, they, they soon learn this person is not enough for them because it can't reach that inside. And so what they do is they always are telling the person, you don't do enough for me. It doesn't matter what you do for them. They cannot do enough for you. Because it's to do with loneliness on the inside. And so lonely people are always making every relationship about them. Bitterness is damage on the inside. At some point in your life, someone has violated you, hurted you. I'm not belittling it. Some people here, you've gone through such trauma that, listen, we sympathize with you. We pray for you. We want to help you get through this. But I want to tell you, before you enter a relationship, it would be better for you to deal with that bitterness, to come to a place of forgiveness and release for those people. Because bitter people, what that tells you is they can't let things go. And you date them, she's beautiful, he's handsome, but they're bitter. And you think, oh yeah, what did they do to you? Oh yeah, they're wicked, they're evil, yeah, we don't like them. But soon you're going to offend that person. When you marry that person, you offend them and they will not let it go. They will not release you. Every little uh, 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 thing you do, they will go back. Back in 1974, you did not put the seat down. But you said you forgave me. If you forgive someone, you've released it. You keep bringing it up. Lust and perversion it happens with women as well as men. Where there's lust and perversion. You're doing things as a single person to gratify your flesh. 
You're looking at things, you're doing things. I don't want to say any more. We've got a mixed audience. There's young people here, kids here, so I'm not going to get graphic, you know, diagrams. But if you're an adult, you know what people do. And they're feeding their lust. You'd be saying, Pastor, I've got needs. I'm a single woman, I've got needs, Pastor. No, 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 no. You're feeding your flesh. That's lust. Some people, some, some people think only men battle with lust. No, women are battling with lust. No woman wants to say amen. Don't worry. I say amen for you. But we know that lust, men, men battle with lust, lust and perversion. And so when, when you're broken on the inside and you have perverted appetites, things that you, 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 you have fetishes, that's, a, that's something damaged on the inside. And then you get married or you get into a relationship and then that person can't fulfill you. Or that person uh, 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 don't want to do these things, these weird things. It's like, what the heck is going on here? And now you've made that person feel unvalued, unclean, unworthy. This is something is broken on the inside before you put the relationship on the table. We need to fix some of the things on the inside. We need to put the legs up. We need to straighten it out so that when you start the relationship, you don't violate nobody. When you enter into the marriage, marriage doesn't need to be a violation. It doesn't have to be this harsh, uh, traumatic experience. And many times the reason why marriages go through these things is because there are damaged people. The Bible says that this woman, she spent everything she had on physicians. Everywhere she went, remember this woman has an issue of blood. She's broken on the inside. It's flowing out. She wants to be free. She wants to be able to build a relationship. She wants to be able to go to the synagogue. She wants to be able to go and, 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 and fulfill all the things, go to people's houses, do normal things. So everywhere she's going, she's like, where's there a doctor? Where's there a doctor? Where's there a doctor? And the Bible says that she spent all that she had on physicians. How many know when you're sick like that, you're going to become desperate to be healed? Damaged people become desperate people. Let me say that again. Damaged people become desperate people. When you are damaged... You can become desperate for someone to fix what is damaged in you. There is no uh, uh, a surprise that we see that people that drift into perversions, if you look in their past, you, you can find abuse many times. You can find violations and abuse and traumatic experiences, whether verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, and these people, they've been damaged. They've gone through things that have been just wicked and, and, and so hurtful and, and terrible. And then we see they, they themselves go into relationships that, that continue this cycle. Because damaged people will become desperate. This woman, everywhere she would go, can you fix me? Okay. Can you fix me? I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Can you fix me? And every man she meets, can you fix me? Can you fix what is damaged in me? I need someone to fix what is damaged in me. Damaged people many times, they're not looking for love, they're looking for healing. They're not looking for love. They're not looking, oh, I meet you, let's have companionship, I love you, you love me, this is 50-50, let's go on. What they're looking for is, will you fix me? Now I'm dating someone who loves me, who will fix me. Now I won't feel this emptiness. I'm not dealing with depression and loneliness and bitterness and lust anymore. But that person can't fix you. Human beings can't fix the inside of another human being. There are people here today, you believe, if you meet the right person, you've met loads of people, hey, can you fix me? Oh, I'm going to date you. I've got my boyfriend, Instagram, and then he breaks your heart, and then you break her heart, and then it's like, oh, that didn't work. I'm still empty. I'm still depressed. Okay, I meet another person just like this woman. Have you realized right now that this is not working? But we don't realize. You know what we think? I need to meet the right person. And people even come in the church and be like, the will of God is one person for you. When God made this one person, he made them for you. 
and they're going to fix you and be perfect for you. That just ain't in the Bible. The will of God is you, you, you are with someone who's saved, who loves Jesus. That's the will of God. And that person may get sick. That person, you could get sick. That person can let you down. That person can even backslide. That's just the way, that's the way life is. And so we realize that somebody just can't fix me. See, when you start a relationship where you become desperate and you bring someone in and you're desperate and you, you, this person is going to fix me and you're trying to make that person fix your loneliness, your depression, your lust, your anger, your bitterness, that is very draining. That is very draining, like to be with somebody and they're trying to suck every bit of life out of you to fix what's wrong inside of them. That is a draining relationship. And eventually, it destroys the relationship. Remember what I said. There are many people, they look good, but they're damaged on the inside. They can look good on Instagram, but they're damaged on the inside. Let me just say this. You should not be DMing people, <laughs> trying to start relationships with random people just because how they look. Some of the most damaged people are excellent at projecting themselves. They, are the, they know how to do their, uh, 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 they are good in the gym, they've got the best bodies, but the problem is they're damaged on the inside. They, they know how to do makeup, contour. Is that, is that, I don't know that, maybe I said it wrong. Condor, contour, I don't know. But they're damaged on the inside. I heard a story about Internet influencers, they meet up each other, they, they look like gentle. The guy looked like a little boy, man. He just looked like he couldn't hurt nobody. Next minute he says, oh, she ran off. Next minute they found he strangled her. He strangled her. He looked like his arms couldn't strangle nothing. Two young people, they're wholesome, they're taking pictures they're in the car, they're going to the, the cliffs, they're going to the beach. They're, people are looking at it, follow it, liking, you guys are so inspirational, you just, in the man's heart, he's broken. Looks good, but he's damaged. You don't, normal men don't strangle women. That's never crossed my mind to strangle a woman. If you're here and you're thinking about strangling people, you're damaged. And the women said, Amen. Amen. Don't put your hand nowhere near a woman's neck unless you're giving her a necklace. Amen, ladies like that one, man. Amen. Come on, pastor. Come on, pastor. And even then, watch his hands. <laughs> Damaged people become desperate, and desperate people always discount themselves. They discount themselves. Now, let me explain what I mean by this. I like to go to Ikea, uh, uh, buy furniture from time to time. I, I, I told you the story about I did the, the DIY, built my kitchen, got it from Ikea. Saved myself a lot of money, man. I love that, man. I love saving money. And so, but sometimes when you come out of Ikea, I, there's, there's a few Ikeas around, you know, the, the, the country, around the world, but a few in London. But the one I come out of, you come out of it, and then on the right, there's this corner, and if you go in this corner, they got all the old discounted bits of furniture. And they got like tables and chairs. And I don't know if, whether someone's bought it, put it up and then brought it back. I don't know. what Some of it, it looks like it's damaged or it's scratched. So there's a bit of paint on it. And so from time to time, if I haven't got a lot of stuff myself, I just, I just wander over there. Francis is looking inside. Just, let me have a go in there. Francis, what are you doing? I'm just looking, man. You don't need nothing. I know, but let me just look. And then I'm just looking at a table. I'm like, maybe we could put that. She's like, I don't want no more stuff in this house. It's okay. And so I'm just looking. And, and what it is, it's like uh, damaged goods. It's not that I want anything. Now, you've got to get it. I, I'm not looking for anything in there. I don't want anything in there. But I'm just seeing what's on offer. Some people who are damaged and desperate, that's where they put themselves. They put themselves in the discount corner. The problem is you're attracting people that are always looking for discounts. That's the problem here. That person, that person don't want you. 
Like, I, I, I don't want anything. I'm just, hey, what's on discount, man? Hmm. I'll just, I'll touch it. Pick it up. Broke with it. Nah, I don't want it. That person ain't looking for marriage. That, woman, that person ain't looking for you. That person ain't looking for no lasting relationship. It's, if it's this, if it's on offer, then I'll take it. Remember, damaged people become desperate. Desperate people always put themselves in the discount corner. You know, um, I was speaking to someone about this. I told them I was going to be preaching this, but there's a difference between, you know, if you go up Bond Street, there's shops up Bond Street. I, I've never been in Louis Vuitton. I think there's a Louis Vuitton there. It must be, isn't it? Or somewhere around there. If you go in these shops, they, they, you know, they'll have like one pair of trousers on the rail or on this thing on the side there. You go in, there's just one pair of trousers taking up all the space because it's like that one pair of trousers is 10,000 pounds. Just there, it's like there. If you go in there and you say, hey, I'll give you, um, they'll give you, give you, give you the door. <laughs> hey, give me, give me a bring. You got any discounts? They're, sorry, sir? Out the door. But if you go to TK Maxx, What's wrong with TK Maxx? <laughs> Listen, I found some good stuff in TK Maxx, man. But how many know TK Maxx? You can't even get the clothes off the rail. <laughs> they put so many trousers. Like <laughs> Sometimes you see something. That's nice, man. Oh, it's my size and my price. You can't even get it off. You have to like, push everything down. And then you see, in TK Maxx, it will say, these trousers were 10,000 pounds. Now they're 10 pence. Some of you need to realize you'll attract a different person if you realize you're more on the Louis Vuitton than the TK Maxx. Why are they treating me like that? Why are they talking about that? Listen, this is who I am. You can say that all you want, but if you're discount, I'm worth this much, I know, but on the label, it says you're now for 10 pence. I'm not even saying that you weren't fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not even saying that you weren't made in the image of God. I'm not saying that you deserve way more respect, way more dignity. But the image, but the, the, the thing is, it's not about that. It's about if you're on discount. It's how you see you. I was preaching in a church. Uh, this was many years ago. Uh, preaching in a church. I was preaching some stuff and this young girl came up to me. She, was about, she looked about 21, 22. Young girl. Very pretty girl. Pretty little girl, man. And she's talking to me. So I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So people come and talk to the pastor. Now, whenever I go to another church, I don't really get into people's business. Because I'm like, you have a pastor. So I'm not here to get in your business. And I don't know, I don't know you. I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to give you very generic advice. I always tell people, I'm going to give you generic advice. You have a pastor, speak to him. He knows you. He's praying for you. He walks with you. He can see you through this. He wants to see your progression. I'm only here for a week. And so I, I don't want to stroke my ego. Like, yeah, I'm going to pon pontificate over people. I realize, but I'm going to give you advice, generic advice. So she starts to tell me her story. She starts to tell me that she's in a relationship with a guy. And the guy's way older than her. Way older than her. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, there could be something wrong with that. But she's like, but he won't commit to me. He keeps mucking about with me. I say, is he saved? She goes, mm. I looked at this woman, yeah, and I was like, listen. Now, but, now, all of you sisters weren't in the church at that time, yeah, so don't hate me. I was like, listen, if I bring that sister to Wandsworth, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> this woman could not see what she was. The guy is, is, is mucking about with other women. The guy is an old hardback dude. <laughs> Some old hardback red eye dude with a crustache. <laughs> Playing with this young girl's heart. She should have run that brother from a long time. Said, get out of here. I'm Louis Vuitton. Treat me like I'm TK Maxx. But she couldn't see it. 
And I remember I had to speak to her, and I was speaking to her. And after it went, I, and whenever I talked to someone in the church, I talked to the pastor. I said, hey, that sister came up to me. She was telling me. That, he said, you told her what she needed to hear, pastor. I've been telling her. People have been telling her. The problem is, at some point in her life, she became damaged. She became desperate. And now she's on discount. Let me close with this and the solution here. As I was preparing for this message, I, I was thinking, what is that, that corner in Ikea called? Because I was thinking, you know, there's a name for it. I didn't know what, it, what to call it. And it's actually not called the discount corner. This is what that corner is called, where all that furniture is. It's called the second chance corner. And as I thought about that, I want to tell you today, if you don't hear anything I said, hear this. God has a second chance chance corner. God has a second chance corner. And you know what it's called? It's called earth. When God looks at the earth, God realizes we're all broken. The Bible says in Romans 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Listen, child of God, you could be sitting there thinking, I'm damaged. Visitor, I'm damaged. The truth is we were all damaged at one point. Maybe not to the same level as that, but there isn't one person. The Bible says we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We are all malfunctioning. You've come here today. God has brought you here today to hear this message. John 3 verse 15. We all know John 3 16. Let me give you 15 so we get it in context. It says, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God loves the second chance corner. God is so into the second chance corner. God didn't walk in there thinking, oh, what's in there for free? God knew the price and God says, I'll come and pay a full price for all of this here. If you are broken, damaged, desperate, God says, I, I, I sent my son for you. I sent my son for you. I want you, I want the damaged goods. Let me tell you why. Luke 4 verse 18, Jesus comes. This is the beginning of his ministry. This is what Jesus says about himself. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus goes into uh, our lives. He's coming to the world where there are broken people, broken because of sin, broken. You're in depression, you're in loneliness, you're in bitterness, you're into perversion and lust. And Jesus hasn't thrown you away. Jesus doesn't pay discount. Jesus says, I want you and I'll pay full price so that I can repair you, fix you and, and, and mend your heart. Jesus really is looking to fix and do something new with your life. See, every single one of us with that table on the ground, but if you're willing to allow Jesus to come under you and fix you and build you up, any man of God you see doing anything, it's only because Jesus fixed him. Anybody you see doing anything for God, it's just because Jesus fixed him. We are all broken. Jesus actually says to some people, they say, are you saying we're sinners? Jesus said, if you would admit you was a sinner, you could be forgiven. But because you say you have no sin, your sin remains. What Jesus is saying, the person who gets fixed is the person who has to admit that they're broken. The person that won't admit that they're broken, they stay broken. Going around the world, sniffing out people that will take them for a discount. Have you tired of this place? Can I speak to some ladies here? Are you not tired of searching for someone to accept you at discount? When uh, 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 there is a love that is so pure and so powerful 
that is bigger than anything, that said, I will pay the full price for you, that I love you and knows all of your flaws and all of your shame and all of the things that you see about yourself, that if we could click a finger, there's 50 things you would change about yourself. You change your age, change your age. And Jesus says, you don't have to change nothing. I love you just the way you are. And I paid full price for you. Come on, I'm going to find you. You was on discount, but I'm taking you home with me and I'm, I'm fixing your legs. I'm taking off the paint. I'm putting you there. And he's going to put you in a prominent place. Where now someone's going to see you and say, mm, that is worth paying the full price. And you're like, I know, because Jesus fixed me. Because Jesus fixed me first. This is beautiful. I love Jesus. Look at someone say, Jesus is bad. <laughs> this woman, everything I just said about Jesus, that he... He goes and fixes the damage. He's come for the damage. This woman saw this in Jesus. And she saw that she was damaged. But in Jesus, it made her driven. See, some of you need to get driven today. You've been damaged. You've been desperate. You've been on discount. But some of you need to get driven. This is what this woman, she sees Jesus and she says this. Matthew 9 verse 21. For she said to herself... If only I touch his garments, I shall be made well. Here is this woman, her whole life, 12 years, damage, desperate, discount. And she sees Jesus, and she's, she's hearing Jesus preach. And she's, she must have heard Jesus preach. There must be something. You don't just walk up to people, random people here, yeah, if I touch him. No, no, no. She, she, she's heard something. She knows something. She's got a revelation, and something in her becomes driven. And she says, if I could just touch him. If I could just touch Jesus, I can be made well. I want that to happen to some of you in this place. I want this preaching to make you driven. I want something today, the Holy Spirit, to get hold of you. And as you sit here today, something inside of you starts to stir, starts to move, starts to echo in your heart and say, you know what? If I touch Jesus, I can be made well. The Bible says that Jesus says this. Who was it that touched me? Then all denied it. Peter said, Master, the crowd surrounds you and they are pressing on you. But Jesus said, mm -mm, someone touched me for I perceive power has gone out of me. Peter says, listen, what do you mean someone touched you? There's crowds around you. But Jesus says, no, 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 there's something different. You know what Jesus is showing us? Is that you can be in the crowd but not touch Jesus. Jesus is also showing us power is when you touch Jesus, not when you're just around Jesus. Some of you are like this. You could be in the crowd of church, but are you touching Jesus? Let me just say this. This is why we pray before service. We pray that, God, I want to touch you. I want to hear from you. I, want to, I don't just want to be in the crowd. I don't want to just come to church broken, damaged, and leave broken and damaged. I want to come and touch you. I want to hear you. I want to know you. Jesus says this to this woman. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Let me say this to some of you here today. I'm not saying you'll never be ready to date. I'm saying some of you need to deal with some issues first. Before you date, maybe you need to ask yourself this question. Can you say that your faith has touched Jesus? Or are you still in the crowd? Can you say that you have felt the power of Jesus heal you and change you on the inside? Can you say you're no longer damaged? Can you say you've heard Jesus say that you belong, that you have joy, and have you heard him say, go in peace? It's not what I think. It's not what others think. It's what God says. Are you looking for a savior in someone or have you already met the savior and now you're just looking for a companion? See, marriage is a wonderful thing. I've been married 20 years. I said it many times and I like to say it. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of being married. It's a good thing. If you're single, praise God. Be single and holy. 
I'm not even saying it in a facetious way. I'm just saying it. I'm proud that I'm married 20 years to my one wife. I'm, par- I'm proud that a man and a woman are married. I'm not ashamed of that. But I want to tell you, Francis is not my savior. And I'm not hers. We have a savior. And I don't know what the years have ahead of us. I don't know what the road has ahead of us. But I know I have a savior. And I hold on to that savior. And maybe there's some of you even here today, you're married. And you're like, you know what? If the truth be known, we've been trying to fix the table while the water's been on it. But it's not too late for you. It's not too late for you. To say, you know what, we need to start touching Jesus. We can't just be in the crowd, coming to church in the crowd. We got married with the crowd. No, 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 we got to touch, we got to break through. We got to press into the word, press in with prayer, and believe God. Next week I'm going to preach, you're ready. But before we preach that, we want to do some business today and deal with some things that are damaged. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to pray and we're going to believe God. We're going to do business with God today. We're going to do business with God. Born again Christian. Don't be just in the crowd. Jesus says, Someone touch me. Peter says, what do you mean? There's loads of people pressing on you. Jesus says, no, no, there's a difference between the crowd and there's a difference between someone breaking through. We love church. We have church. You know, there's many people here and we, 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 we welcome every single one of you. But I want to tell you, you've got you to break through. You've got to touch Jesus. And some of you, you're, you're born again. You love God. You're a Christian. But God has challenged you today and said, you need to press through the crowd. You need to touch me. You need to press through. And if God has spoken to you about pressing through today, I want you to lift your hand up. I want you to go on record. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Amen. God sees those hands. You can put them down. You can put them down. God has been speaking to you. Let me speak to a different set of people here. Maybe you're a visitor here. Maybe you've been coming for a while. But you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You really are in the crowd. You're not born again. You haven't heard Jesus say, your faith has made you whole. You don't have the guarantee that if you was to die tonight, you know you're going to heaven. You don't have that. But I want to tell you, there is hope for you today. That's why Jesus has brought you here today. That you would accept him as your Lord and Savior. That you would reach out your arm of faith and accept Christ. That what he did on the cross was to heal and save you from your sin. Remember what I said, we are all broken. I read that scripture, all have sinned. If you sit here today and say, I've never sinned, Jesus says, your sin will remain. You will stay broken. But if we will all admit and say, you know what? I am a sinner. I need salvation. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. It's God dealing with you right now. You say, Pastor, I need to give my life to Christ. I need to stretch out. I don't want to just be in the crowd, come to church, hear a few words, go home the same. I want deliverance. I want healing. I want to be born again saved. I want to hear Jesus. Then pray this prayer with me right where you are in your seat. Every head's bowed, every eye closed, but pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Help me to know you. Help me to live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. While every head is back. Thank you for joining with us online. We hope that this message both spoke to you and encouraged you in your walk with Jesus. 
Now, if you've just prayed to accept Christ, then we'd like to congratulate you on making the best decision that you ever made. We'd love to send you some resources that will help you on your journey, so please click the link below the video and someone can share it with you now. From everyone at Soccer Castle and Just Church, we hope you have a great week and feel to join in with you all.